with a, a new document like this, um, that's, that's you know, something we haven't turned into a template, we're gonna launch or initialize Woodpecker's auto template feature. So what auto template does is auto template is going to look for a bunch of different things. It, it casts a very wide net. It's looking for terms that have one, either been identified by a human as variable, for example, things in brackets, um, curly braces, carrots around them, highlights, underlines, things like that. It also looks for things that maybe you've, you've previously used that are usually dynamic or usually changed, like dates, organization names, people's names, uh, currencies, uh, addresses, things like that. And so what it does is it, it's going to give us a list of all of the things it found in the document that it thinks you might want to turn into a um, into a woodpecker field or into like a, into a a dynamic variable field, and what our job is is to basically just go through each of these suggestions, and accept or reject uh, any of them that we don't want, or I'm sorry, reject any of them that we don't want. So by default, all of these suggestions are accepted, meaning that as soon as we click create these fields, they will all get turned into woodpecker fields and inserted across the document in the appropriate locations. But not all of these are relevant. So what I wanna do is go through each one and, and reject any of them that don't make sense. So firstly, there's some arrows next to each suggestion. If I click on the arrows next to one, it's gonna go and highlight the occurrence of that field that it found. So in this case, this is February 4th, 2020. This looks like an execution date, which looks like it's something that I, I would like to keep as a, as a field, that I would like to turn into a field. So if I want to accept the suggestion, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is because they're all accepted by default. Now, if I, let's go down to the next one. I'll click on the arrow here and you can see that this highlights Delaware General Corporation. You can see that it missed law at the end here. It's actually supposed to be Delaware General Corporation law. You can also see that this isn't something that looks like it's gonna change. This looks like it's pretty static. So I actually gonna to wanna to go ahead and reject this suggestion meaning I don't wanna turn this into a variable field. So to reject a suggestion, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the trash can next to uh, each one over here, and that's gonna make it uh, sort of grayed out. And now that suggestion is rejected. What's important to know about auto template is that it's not gonna be a catch-all. It's not perfect uh, for every document that you throw at it. We usually say that auto template picks up maybe 70 to 80% of the fields that you're ultimately going to want to create in a document, depending on the use case. Now, um, now that's okay because after auto template sort of takes a first pass at automating the simple stuff, uh, what we can do after the fact is, is create some additional custom fields, which you'll see what that looks like here in a second. But again, don't think of auto template as a catch all for everything. Think of it as a taking a first pass at the large chunk of sort of very simple fields that you ultimately will want to create. Let's go next to this board of directors of the corporation. Again, this doesn't look like it's something that's going to change or that it will be dynamic. So I'm going to reject that as well. The rest of these in brackets, I have bracketed them on purpose. So I know that they're, they're going to, uh, I would like to turn them into fields. So I'm just going to kind of skip over these because I know that those are things I want to, I want to keep. Uh, but let's go to company county here. This is something that I highlighted. So again, I'd like to keep that. Let's go to California. Again, this is California and it's meant to be California Corporation's code, but also this isn't something that's gonna change. So I'm going to reject that uh, suggestion as well. Finally, we've got company zip, which is also something that I highlighted. And so that's good to go, I wanna keep that. So what we've done is we've rejected a few of these suggestions. We've kept most of them. And so at this point, we're just gonna go and click on create these fields. So what auto template will do at this point is go through the doc and it's going to create these fields for us over on the right such that we end up with a, a simple form. And what it's doing right now, which you can see it's kind of selecting pieces of text and then kind of drawing a blue box around them. It's actually inserting uh, references to each one of these fields across the document at each uh, term that it found. So what we're gonna be left with is, again, a basic form over here on the, on the right with some numbers next to each field that indicate the number of times that that field has been inserted into the document. Um, so again, this is really just to take what might have been a hour long process and turn it into you know, 30 seconds. If there's any questions about auto template, 
feel free to ask now. Um, I know it's a, it's a little bit uh, sometimes hard to grasp and, and layer onto what your specific use case is, but the best way to test it out is honestly just to test it out in one of, one of your documents and, and see how it, how it looks. Um, so one important thing to know as well is that auto template creates these fields and names them the same thing that it found in the document. So you can see that most of these are, are make sense, right? They're pretty, um, pretty indicative of what we're asking for in terms of information, but a couple of them are not. So this one, for example, 10 million, I don't know what this field is asking for. Um, and that's because it named the field 10 million because that's what it found in, in the doc. So what we can do is, is I wanna change the name of this field. But first, I want to see where it's being used so that I can actually tell what the context is so I know what to name it. If we click on this down arrow here and click show instances, this is going to highlight the 10 million instance of, um, or the instance of this 10 million field here. So I can see that it's, it's referencing the you know, total number of shares, for example. So what I want to do is change this field name to, let's just say, number of shares. To do that, I'm going to go over to these three dots. I'm going to click edit. And then I'm just going to change this name to number of shares like this. Once I save it, you'll see that the placeholder updates in the document automatically. And now I'm good to go. I can move on to the next one. So let's do the same thing on this next one here because that also looks a little bit nonsensical. We'll click a down arrow, show instances, and it's going to highlight uh, that occurrence here and I can see that this is referring to what looks like a par value. So again, we'll go over to these three dots, click on them, click edit, and we'll just call this par value. And you'll see the placeholder update as well. The rest of these fields look pretty good. They look like they're uh, pretty sensical and they refer to actually what they're asking me for. So at this point in a simple document, we might, we might be done. Um, at, we would then go and do this uh, sort of shortcut here, which is a saving this current document to my collection, which would then make it available to the rest of my team. And we've created a simple woodpecker template. It's as simple as that. 